Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Support for this podcast comes from Frito-Lay in the 2023 Snack Bracket Championship. The Frito-Lay Snack Challenge is underway, and fans are voting on their favorite snacks to crown champion. We're talking about primetime matchups between the best 64 snacks in the land. Will Ruffles Ridges reign supreme? Can Doritos defend their dynasty? Or will Smart Food use their smarts for a surprise upset? Only you can decide. Get in on all the action for a chance to win up to $1,000 or a year's worth of snacks. Let your snacks be heard. Just go to frito to vote and enter for a chance to win. No purchase necessary. Three stakes ends April 3rd, 2023. Void but prohibited. Years worth of snacks awarded in the form of 52 coupons, each good for one bag of chips. See official rules at frito Hello, everyone. Welcome to our first episode of Group Therapy in about a week. Unfortunately, the Dallas Mavericks lost to the Sacramento Kings in the second night of a series against the Sa- against the Kings in Sacramento. Tonight just also happened to be the debut of the Luka Doncic-Kyrie Irving combo after Luka Doncic missed most of this road trip following a heel contusion when he briefly thought he was Michael Jordan, got blocked against the uh, New Orleans Pelicans and came down hard on his leg. Um, this was a 133-128 to overtime loss. Uh, kind of a disjointed and weird game where the, the Kings really punished the Mavericks in the paint, uh, only for the Mavericks to kind of roar back on talent alone in the second, in the end of the second quarter, uh, with Luca and Kyrie looking unbelievable. Third quarter was pretty weird. Both teams sort of trading baskets. Fourth quarter got very peculiar. Kyrie Irving came to the rescue in multiple uh, circumstances, helped push the game into, um, overtime, though, missed free throws, uh, definitely bit the Mavericks there. Uh, in overtime, the only person who could really seem to get a decent look was Kyrie. Unfortunately, the Mavericks could not stop the paint points, surrendering, I think, 74, which might be a season high for the Mavericks. Um, Kings also, you know, it's a good point there, Brian, in the chat notes, turnovers are pretty rough at, at for the Mavericks, which that was an instance of, of some of them that were happening were like overpassing. I think uh, just it, it, this is a tough loss. There's a lot of, of, of really interesting, good things that came out of this game. And then there were also a lot of like, how did this happen instances in this game? I'm very disappointed personally uh, that we're not getting to talk more about a very good Josh green game, eight of 12 from the floor, 23 points, including five of eight from three. Um, Darren Fox did light him on fire on defense, but I'm not holding that against him because Darren Fox is really, really good. Uh, just as a really entertaining game, really good two game series. Uh, I think, you know, big picture, if you want to overreact to this game, I get it, but I think this is, you, know, you lose to the, the team that's ahead of you in the standings. Are you going to get super pissed? Particularly with some of the, I think, correctable issues, like namely ejecting Theo Pinson directly into space and not having him play 10 minutes. That could help. Um, yeah. All right. So let's come up on stage, hang out for a while, then maybe go to bed. Coming up first, Sam. Hi, Sam. How you doing? Hey, Kirk. How you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. Well, these, these late, you know, I was talking to Josh about this. So if you think about this, Sam, when we traded for Kyrie, it was noon Sunday. So we are roughly 12 hours from it being, you know, a week straight of like basketball chaos in, in both good and wild ways for the Mavericks fandom. So I'm, I'm tired. No, I, I get it. It's been, um, 
it's, it's lit a fire under me just as a mass fan. So you definitely want well, to see. I mean, it's definitely fun. I will tell you that much. Like our our metrics are hilarious. Like they're you know that that Kyrie Irving bump is real. Um, and it's you know it's it's the perfect sort of injection when this team was feeling really stagnant. And there's just a lot to talk about. Like this game had everything. If you want to overreact to something, this it was in there. Oh, oh yeah, and I, I'm going to overreact a little bit. Um, I'll make three points, and I'll make them super. That's quick. all right. Go ahead. All right, first point, don't want to blame the refs because I thought the refs were bad tonight. Uh, there was one play in the fourth where Luka clearly got bumped and they didn't call a foul. And then literally on the other end, De'Aaron Fox had the same thing happen to him. Yep, they a foul. yep I know so, what sequence you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, so that was annoying. That was just one out of many plays. I mean, they called a jump ball on De'Aaron Fox when it wasn't even a jump ball. He just fell out of bounds. There's like a caught. Kevin Herter, like very bad travel that he scored a three-pointer on. Yeah, there was some wonky stuff. Yeah, was- but that's, you know, that goes both ways. Yeah, it, it was bad, but I, like I said, I, I can't blame the rest because the Mavs did themselves a hole, and they got out of it, but it, it is what it is. But uh, second point, Luka, like, I love Luka, but he kind of sold in the fourth and overtime. Luka was pretty uh, bad this game. Yeah, because, I mean, even in the end where they had that chance to take the lead, I thought he had a layup, and I know he saw some bonus coming, but I think he could have still took the shot, and then he passed it to Reggie Bullock, and, you know, you saw what happened. Mm-hmm. And then in the fourth, or in, the, in overtime, which goes to my third point, uh, Jason Kidd, like, I get it. He's going to have to learn how to work with these guys. It's the first game, but they, they ran the Luka play. <laughs> yeah, after all this, the Luka play. Yeah, they ran the Luka play in the fourth when Kyrie was cooking in overtime. Excuse me, in overtime. And then Kyrie was cooking in overtime. And they just said, oh, let's let Luka take a step back three, which you didn't need to do at that point. If anything, you could have just drove to the basket because that's what Luka did the next play. <laughs> but just took it to the basket, and then it was already over at that point. Well, I'm not, I'm not a big Nate Duncan guy. Not just because I just choose not to pay attention, but he, he had a tweet that crossed my timeline. Actually, uh, he quote tweeted himself, just really loved this. Um, he said, uh, kid blew it by not taking a timeout to get the two for one after the Kings tied it with 37 seconds left. Yes, that's that's one mistake. And then he quote tweets himself and he said, kid blew this again. Herder makes a layup with 41 seconds left when the Mavericks were down four. Ky- uh, they don't take a timeout and Kyrie hits a three with 24 seconds left. So they have to foul. Um, that's just a whole sequence of like fuckery that is in hindsight, really easy to judge in the moment. I, I'm not as critical as I kind of want to be um, because it's, you know, things happen, things are moving. That that rebound that Herter got was over Kyrie, where it was just the way the ball went off the rim was so wild. It's things happen in these basketball games, but to say Kid got out coached in this game is a um, is a minor understatement because the rotations alone, and I understand you got to figure this stuff out when you have a new guy, but there were like way too many Theo Penson, Javale McGee plays like in 2023 what was going on yeah i don't i don't get that neither like i, I you know from one standpoint i want to say i understand mm-hmm. it just because i feel like he doesn't want to obviously burn Kyrie out you know he's still on a new team still trying to get used to his teammates mm-hmm. so he's trying to manage the minutes a little they bit played, so we played 40 minutes well i guess the overtime game exactly exactly well but, yeah but it's like okay at the end of the day i mean you got josh green out there dominant he just balled out tonight you got Kyrie balling. You got Luca, even though he was bad in the fourth and overtime, he still was doing Luca things. And just throwing a little mix. I mean, Christian Wood, as bad as he was, he still had not. I don't, not, I don't under. Christian Wood is all like, we, we almost need to have a separate green room to be like, what is going on with Christian Wood? I don't know if it's a coaching thing. I don't know if there's some beef. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if he's just fussing. I, I don't get it. Because at this point, it's like something's obviously going on that we don't know about. Because. Mm-hmm. I mean, JaVale McGee's getting rotation minutes at this point more than he is now. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. It, 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 it's a tough loss, but at the end of the day, I mean, you go three and two, Luka didn't play four games. I'm not mad at it. Okay. I just saw, saw my, my man Bobby, who joins us most nights, says, this Mavs fan base sucks. I'm kind of done with y'all. Peace. I mean, this is a, a group chat for complaining. Like, it's in there. It's in the title. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not, like I said, I mean, I get the overreaction most of the time because I overreact a lot. I get it, but it, it's called being a fan. Like, well, this you know, game, that's what I mean, where this game had like a little bit of everything. Like I I I wanted to like there's there's Josh and I really got into this, so I I hope you guys listen to our recap podcast. But Josh and I got into our frustrations with how when you have two of the best offensive players alive, 
how do you not have more actions involving those two players using like one another? There might have been one to two screens set between Kyrie and Luca all night. What I, I was, I was, there's just a lot of like really confu- like confusing stuff, but because they're so talented offensively, they just sort of hung around with the Kings. Exactly. And that's why, like I said, you know, there was a lot of, even in the last, oh, yesterday's game, there was a lot of Theo bringing the ball up, Tim Hardaway bringing the ball up, uh, uh, Reggie bringing the ball up. And it's like, I, I get, again, I get it, but why? Well, yeah. So, <laughs> so, and, 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 and just to not, I'm not, I'm certainly not picking on Bobby, but he, he says it's the first game. And I think that's true. It's, but we also were doing this when the Mavericks were like splitting games to start the year when they were losing games by two points because Jason Kidd was making bad decisions. Instead of instead of making very bad, obvious decisions, what I recommend from my armchair is to simply not make those bad decisions. <laughs> right, right. Just just simplify the game, man. It's just all you got to do. But I'll, I'll get. I'll get it's great. I don't you. care. We're good. All right. Talk soon, Sam. Thanks for hanging out. Um. Yeah. Because I mean, I think you can. If you want to talk about like the nuances of the Kyrie Lucas stuff. There's so much meat on the bone the Mavericks have to get to. That's where, and that's not like a criticism. That's just like a, hey, you know, what if we get some practice time together and we can figure out, you know, like the, the, some, some things which work for us. Okay. Coming up next, friend of the program, bringer of the heat, Jason Hi. Gallagher. All of y'all are friend of the program. I don't know why I say that. Um, man, I, Kirk, I feel like I've been listening to you, uh, complain for, Almost like twelve almost, years, almost a decade, and I and I do find it funny that this is the game that people are like, "I've had enough." Like this fucking guy. <laughs> well, I'm not. It's like I'm laughing. It's not even like a. It's just like like getting mad at Jason Kidd is therapeutic because kids post game press conferences, yeah. whenever they lose, are just like he's like, "Wow, did you see that game? Neat." Like, <laughs> yeah, he, he's 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 a lot. This is going to be. I'll tell you what, man. I, I do think that there is there is a um, there is a patience that needs to be had, but there there is a healthy skepticism based on kids, you know, prior coaching situations, and this is going to be very interesting, just given the fact that you you know Luca Luca has not had to think about any like really anything. Every mm-hmm. stupid step back, almost every stupid one, was probably the best shot. The the one time I feel like he, it was like less than five seconds and he had to like try to tie it or something. I believe he, they tried to pass it or something and it, and like the ball didn't even like go towards the basket. So I was yeah. like, you know, maybe you just got to do the step back. And now it's so clear. I mean, in the last, you know, whatever possession, like he should have gotten the, the ball back to Kyrie. It's so clear that he's going to have to make not just like a, a tactical adjustment but an actual like this is where the managing of the superstars is going to Mm -hmm. really come into place which if you you know if you ever get to have an in-depth conversation with a player you'll you'll learn that that is 98 percent of a coach's job is to figure out how to make two superstars work together and i think that that is what's going to be incredibly incredibly interesting down the stretch well, uh, I assume that Kyrie will continue. Will will have conversations with Luca, and they'll watch tape, and they'll see some things. Like there was a play in the first quarter where Luca's pushing it up the left side. Kyrie's in front of him on the left wing. Luca passes it to Kyrie, yeah. and Kyrie fakes a pass because he expected Luca to cut, and Luca stopped and put his hands on his knees. Yeah. And we're like three minutes into the game, yeah, and. That's the sort of stuff that I just really want Luca to do. It's the off ball stuff we've been begging for that well, he now yeah. need. Like, sorry, man, Kyrie's going to hit you on the numbers. Yeah. You got to move your ass. Sorry. You got, you got, to, yeah. And, and our, our, our good friend Austin was, was very quick to point out that, that Ky- having a Kyrie is going to make Luca, it's going to make him grow in ways that I don't think any coach could, any whatever. Interesting. And it's simply, it's simply because um, it's, it's learning how to play. Like, he, he is not going to succeed in this league unless he learns to play with a – Well, a, see, but this is the thing, that, Jason. Uh, he knows how to do this stuff. He's not been pushed into it. Uh, 
Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I agree. He is, an, he is a basketball savant and a genius, but he's never really had to do this. I mean, he played off ball with Real Madrid. Goran, Goran Dragic busted well, his ass in the 2017 little... World Championships. <laughs> it was a long time yeah, it, ago. Okay, so, so that, that's, yeah, and that's a slightly different thing where it's like remembering how to ride a bike. So it's it's so that that element of it I'm fine with taking time. It's just it's just a very it's just a, it's it's going to be really really interesting to see how it all unfolds because you do see you do see it. I mean like it was it was not a great Luca game and it did feel like there was some hit, hit, him at his peak is when there's zero hesitancy. And I did feel like there was a little bit it's like do you take over now or do you Well he tried to force a couple of passes to Kyrie where it's like it's, he was overpassing exactly. the ball. But what he he yeah. he's just got to move. I I don't. Yeah, yeah. I, I, and and, and f- I, I do want to make it clear. The, the point of this entire thing is to assess the game, sure. and that's what happens in the game. I'm not concerned about Luca no. really, like at all, at all, at all. He's the least of the concern of the Dallas Mavericks. I think that kid, ha- you know, figuring out a way to coach these guys so that they can work together is something that I'm very curious about. It's just got to say but, something like everybody under, for If you've listened to my show for a long time, if you followed Mavs Moneyball for a long time, I was into Luca a year before he was a Maverick. Now that's not, doesn't make me special. Luca was a, a worldwide prospect when he was 14. Wow. wow. I listened, I listened to the band before <laughs> they got big. So that's it's like, I, I love, so it's like when I, when I issue these sorts of thoughts, I'm, I'm just sort of like, like thinking about it here, but it's, <sighs> it, it's it's just it's interesting to me to that, that this sort of growth is is going to have to be you know pushed upon him to to a certain degree and I I'm not doing this because I'm you know it's like last year whenever I came into these shows and I'd be like Luca was heavy and half the room would be like he's not heavy and then we learned by Christmas he was weighing two seventy at training camp right okay it, it it's okay because he's gonna work through it he's that kind of player he. I said earlier that I thought he looked terrible. Then you look at his stat line and it's like, you yeah. look terrible? What are you talking about? No, and they, and they for the most part, they, I mean, like, that. I still kind of consider these games right after a midseason trade as sort of like a, a little bit of, like, fucking around, trying to figure it out. Yeah. And can I say that? But anyways, um, and, and you know, they Sacramento Kings are the friggin' three seed. Yeah. And, and, and this would have been a huge game. win. Oh, my gosh. And so it's like, it, it's like, this this is an uh, this a uh, whole road trip was an upward trajectory, and I do not feel like they got, they, they, they now have twenty five percent of their road wins from this season came from this trip. Yes, and so this was all in all very positive, and it's the NBA, and it's there are times where De'Aaron and Foxes are going to De'Aaron and Fox, sure. and that, there's nothing you can do about it. Um, but you know, it, 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 there is there are some things that just sort of make you go, huh? Okay, and you, you know, and 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 not to go full like freaking podcaster on everybody but like you know i, I just I, I i i kind of i like the body language that Kyrie is displaying with oh, yeah. with, the, with the players and the, the camaraderie that seems to be there and at times it feels like you want luca to partake in that a little bit more yep do you ever feel that way i do i do because and i so, think you know i think that, that was a little illuminating tonight but all in all great great road trip and um it's just an interesting a really interesting game that they still almost won which is yeah. sort of miraculous no that and, that would have been that would have been the thing where it's like we came in here and they'd won we'd be like wow they won that game so yeah 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 so shout out everyone we are aware that um teams lose oh yeah no i i uh, very much so it's it's <laughs> It's th- this game was like that's why I say it's gr- it's a great game to overanalyze because there's moments where it's like Luca hit that step back and tripped over Jason Kidd's foot and was yeah. like that was like the peak moment of vibes and then you know weird stuff happens like weird stuff happens most NBA games but this was this just had your kind of gambit of things where yeah. like my favorite was JaVale McGee uh airport win or not airport uh car dealership win man just like his arms all over the place just putting up shots <laughs> yeah i mean and honestly to the to the chat i mean the the the, the kings are the three seed the Mavs are the four seed is that is would would anybody be that worried if we saw them in the playoffs no, i'm not no. worried the only team that actually not, fundamentally not a, bothers not, me is the golden state warriors because i don't think we can defend them right but like sacramento it took a little bit of a god tier game from tier and down the stretch 
And, you know, I, and also they were at home and it was overtime and they, you know, they, they have an, uh, just an unbelievable crowd. So it's yep. like they, they, but I, I would take them 10 times out of 10 in the playoffs. So it's like when you watch two back-to-back games and that's your assessment, I'd say that's a successful little uh, back-to-back. Well, thanks for hanging out at 1 a.m. with us, buddy. Of course, any t- anytime for Talk you. Talk soon. Yeah, the chat is beating up uh, all sorts of, of potential playoff opponents, and I agree with them. All right, Nav, what's going on? How you doing, guy? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I am I am okay. I'm a little better. Like I actually I took like a three hour nap today and uh I, I feel like a human for the first time since probably Monday. Yeah, I hear you. My my kid was sick all week too. He was at home. Oh, just and... like me. It's four days at home. Yeah. I'm I am just I'm not I'm not built yeah. different. I can't do it. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. So I'm with you. Um just on the game, i I feel like tonight was kind of the classic uh the classic example of like what you guys and Josh specifically talk about with like, you could go in any direction. Like mm-hmm. I already have like a first take, um, you know, a take on the game of where I could just like roast Luca based on everything I saw, like as an overreaction, but it was frustrating to lose in the manner we did with the poor execution down the stretch. You know, you wanted more given that we have Kyrie now mm-hmm. and just not just like Luca I was kind of disappointed with his decision making. Um, apparently, Luca was also disappointed with his decision making. If you read his quotes, yeah, they, I'm glad he took ownership of it. That's always yep. good to see. Like, not I'm not worried like long term and everything. It was just, I'm just kind of too high expectations. Being like, come on, man, you know better than that. Yeah, like what are you doing? Like that's that's been our problem whole the whole year. We finally got somebody else. So, but um, but also I don't know. I kind of. It was kind of interesting seeing how much the ball was moving in the first quarter, in the last two games, and then this game when Luca came in, it was just like, are we not going to run the same plays? Very much like, we- agree. I don't like even when Luca didn't have the ball, other guys were going up slowly. I think there was still a fair amount of ball movement tonight. You know, one of our, our I don't know if Brian's still in the chat. Brian Zillin, but he was saying in our in our um, in our Mavs Moneyball Slack, he's like, got oh, a lot of pound in the ball. I'm like, I just didn't see that. I saw a lot of overpassing, I think, but I didn't see some of the play. Like, there was some interesting play design going on, and and you know, because Kyrie even talked about it. Because Grant asked at the DallasBasketball.com asked a question about just some of the different actions where you get guys moving and get guys going, and they just didn't do some of that. And I wish, I wish they would. And and because you know. Luca really probably only brought the ball up like a third or half the time in the first, in the first quarter. It was a lot, all sorts of guys were doing it. Yeah. I, it, it just, it's frustrating. Cause it like the whole season you're, you're, I don't know. I'm sitting here being like, does Jason kid not know how oh, to I mean, play? This is Luca. And, this and, is Luca. Right. I beat up right, kid that, earlier. That's the only conclusion. Yeah. And yeah. Cause you're, cause when it's other, cause then when like Luca doesn't play, you're like, well, nobody can do anything. And then you see the Utah games. <laughs> Right, and you see the way the ball's moving around in Utah, and you're like, "Wait a second! So these guys can actually do something? Like, what have we been doing this whole time?" Like, I mean, I it's like they wait for Luca, and all their beads are off Luca. Brian in the chat, um, Brian Krabby says, "You know, their post ups, they want a lot of Luca post ups, and like that." The overarching problem, guys, and this is like factually accurate. You filter out, um, you filter out garbage time, and in the half court, the Dallas Mavericks, when Luca's in the game have the best offense of the last 20 years in terms of points per possession. I just can't stand to watch it sometimes because when it's ugly, it's awful. And I just, I don't know. I like some of this ball movement stuff. You see like just the Josh green, willy nilly wild ass attacks. Like I, I like Reggie Bullock attacked off the dribble tonight. There was weird shit happening. Yeah. And seeing everybody actually play basketball and make cuts and mm-hmm. move like it's, it, it was really refreshing to watch. It was just kind of disappointing that when Luca came back, seemed, they didn't do it as much. As much, and I, I and yeah. that's hopefully that gets that that kinks get worked out over time. I mean, I, I pitched something on my podcast with Josh last night where if I think the ideal usage of Luca is similar to how the Nets used James Harden before they before Harden got hurt, um, where they ran offense for three games and then they played Harden ball in the fourth quarter, where James just beat the hell out of teams. And I could you like Luca as a closer is so much more fun than Luca as a, as a, as a starter, because everybody's tired, at least in theory, because everybody's tired and Luca just doing mean shit to people in the post. That sounds fun. 
Yeah. And the the other thing is um, that I wanted to touch on. Um, I don't want to talk about the offensive. That was terrible. Uh, Josh Green, like he was making corner threes, yep. above the break threes, driving to the basket. He had a like, left-handed, like a driving left floater over two dudes. Right, like who? No one, no one would have thought he was even capable of doing anything close to this last year. Well, the scouting report on him doesn't make any sense because, like, guys are getting blown by on him. Like, they're not. I, I that's. I'm going to be interested, and this is not. This is more of a other team thing than Josh, but it's just like we've seen this for like seven, eight games now that he is scoring well off the dribble and shooting the ball well. You got to give him a little bit of respect, and it the teams just aren't. Yeah, it's just been really nice to watch him actually yeah. play. And, like, it was like he was making some clutch buckets. Like, Luca I thought we were going to win just... on, when he hit that floater. I was like, this game is over if yeah. Josh is doing this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, just really happy and impressed with him. Um, I would like to uh, – one last time. Sure. I think it's the last time I'm going to bitch about uh, the Christian Wood situation. No, no, we're going to be doing this for the rest of the year. It's maddening. I don't even know what we... to talk okay. about with this one. But I'm, let, let's okay. hear your My... take. Okay, my my problem is I don't think the Mavs have gave him an honest shot. Is I think from the moment he came here, there was you know they talked about how he hadn't talked to Jason Kidd. He didn't really know what his role was going to be. He was going to be coming off the bench, and mm-hmm. it was very clear that he was you know he was one of the best players on the team and needed to be starting and trying to you know develop a chemistry with Luca and. I completely understand all of his flaws after every single shot, you know, holding his hand up, not getting back on defense when he misses shots, like late rotations, like he can be very maddening. I just don't know why, like Jason Kidd didn't sit him down and like welcome him. Right. And give him a chance. So if it was me, I don't know. I would have been like, all right, man, this is your last chance. We want a contract. I get it. I'm going to help you get this contract. The way you get the contract is play defense. If you play defense and rebound, we will help you get this contract. You'll still get your points. Don't worry. But you need to play defense and get rebounds, and you'll get the contract. And then see if he does it or not. Yeah. And I and I feel like they didn't put him in that situation where he's being jerked around. He's not sure his role. He's not sure how many minutes he's getting. He's worried about his contract. So when he's in the game, he's trying to score because he thinks it looks good on paper. If he's averaging like 20 and 10, yeah, it's, it's a, it's like a bit of quicksand where like everything right. he does, it, it's like winning is the cure all. And he seems to be put in this position where he's making, I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. Like I feel, I feel bad because it's, he's, he's, you know, he played pretty well tonight, all things considered when he started out pretty rough. I, ah, it's, it's a tricky deal. Yes. Yeah, and I I feel like he's I just, I just what I don't know I don't think we have a, a true assessment of him because of all those things. So I think he's going to leave, and then everyone's going to talk about all the crappy parts of his game, and I'm going to be like, I don't know, man, I don't think kid gave him a real chance, hmm. and like we never really did anything. But that's that's my take on Christian Wood. Um, last thing I wanted to just talk about: watching Kyrie Irving play basketball is unbelievable. It is. I cannot get over how amazing this guy is. He made that one like driving spin move floater off the glass towards the end of the game. I I was like, who the hell is this guy? Like, well, this is crazy. The the stuff that, and I think everybody will take away different pieces of what they like. But what I really like doing is watching how he sets people up with his um, not his pivot, the lead foot where he's before he dribbles, like the foot that you can pick up and move when you have one foot planted. And he's just so precise and it's so funny watching how he sets guys up and goes a different direction. And then the way he rises and fires on these little 10 to 15 foot shots, he just gets a guy going one direction and pulls up and man, uh, there's, there's going to be a lot to like about his, his basketball play. I think um, I'm going to be curious to see how he does on these catch and shoot threes. Cause he's going to get a lot of them. Today's episode is brought to you by cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, Cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, Cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. 
So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical. Yeah, that floating three where he was like falling sideways on the right wing to like get it to within one point towards the end of the game. Like how did he like, I don't it know. was just, it was just nice to see. Yeah, a, it was just watching. Him I do like, want to address something crap. though. Cause Amar just made a point in the chat and you know, you were up here a couple days ago. I was, I, I remain skeptical of the long-term Kyrie proposition. I just do. I think you probably do oh, too. Oh, a hundred percent. No, this is going to end. But terribly. I think it's one hundred percent. This is going to be terrible. I think I, the... I don't. I just don't know. <laughs> I just don't know if it's going to be like in the summertime or if it's going to be like next year or whatever. It's so I be say terrible. that right. I say that 100%. because I think the best course of action for everybody is if you're if you're thinking about that, then you're missing what the really fucking cool part of why we watch, which ought to be the basketball. Wait, like I know a lot of people love the transaction game. I don't. I like watching film and seeing like the miraculous shit these people can do with the basketball. And Kyrie is a wizard with the basketball. So I, I'm gonna enjoy I'm gonna enjoy stuff like this. It's it's the kind of things he did tonight with the moves that he was making, the 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 difficulty of his shot of his shots were is amazing. So yeah, I I was I'm going based off your that tweet you did or where it's expectations or sure. of joy, right? Like after after settling in and like processing the trade and being like, all right, I have no control over everything. Right, they don't, you know, like I can't do anything about it. I want to watch the team play. I like watching basketball. Yep, I might as well, you know, just have no expectation that yeah. he's going to be and, here. And for three games, that, yeah. He's looked incredible, like to the points where I'm like, yeah. hey, Jason Kidd, could we could we be careful with his minutes? I don't want. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, I'm going to get out yep. of here. I appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for hanging Thanks. out. I think we got one more caller and then I'm going to go to bed. Oh, nope. Three more people. Oh, well. Adam, welcome to the show. Hey, Kirk. Uh, this was, uh, take away the result. This was an amazing, entertaining game to watch. Real fun. Um, yeah. This is like, if I'm just, if there's a note to the NBA, I know Giannis is great. I think the Bucks deserve five national televised games because they're terrible to watch. <laughs> I don't want to watch Jimmy Butler with Miami. <laughs> you know, like, give me some more Orlando Magic games. Give me, that's how you grow this league sure. with casual fans. You know, we need more games like this. This, this game, not, not necessarily with the, the scorn, obviously, but this is like a, old school 90s basketball game where just there's a big shot making with decent defense being played on both ends at you know towards the end of the game and just trading kind of difficult shots back to back to back and it just it was just it was just entertaining basketball to watch you know the the way the ball just kind of swung up you know along the perimeter just there aren't enough there's not enough teams that are that are getting like out of Tele, you know, televised kind of games that play that that type of way, right? I would, like, I would much rather this. Like, if you're going to show a Nash, and granted, national TV audiences, it's a it's a catch twenty two thing because it's like you would love to grow the game by showing a Mavs Kings game on ESPN as opposed to the dreck that was the Lakers Golden State Warrior game. But those two fan bases are enormous, and the NBA makes these decisions months out. It's very. It's very tricky. I would like to see more more of that stuff too, because it's like you don't want to grow the, you want to show these guys on the rise. Like I, I still remember, and I don't know if anybody else in here is old enough for this. Chris Paul as a rookie did not have a nationally televised game. I don't think because the the flex scheduling was much harder back then. Yeah, that that first year in uh, with uh, New Orleans, uh, they're actually playing at OKC because of. Uh, Katrina, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Then. Yeah, I think that's right. Man, that was a long time ago. God, but it was. Um, that it, and it, you know the NBA just gets wonky with this sort of stuff. But this, you know, this it really was a fun game. Like I, I a bitch about like West Coast games. Like it's like it's my job, and I didn't. I love staying up for these two games. S- secondly, people gotta just divorce themselves from the fact that this, the Kings haven't made this, made it to the playoffs for the last 17 years. It's hard to, to not think that the Kings are going to, are going <laughs> to King, are going to just going to King it again. Right. Sure. But this is, this is legitimately a top three, top four team in the West. They are really good, you know? And I, I think, I mean, for at least this year, I, 
I mean, they're going to sustain this thing. That that is just a really good basketball team. And if you're if you're kind of saying, well, how how did Dallas lose tonight? Well, there aren't many teams that are going to be able to put up 120, 130 that easily night in night out. I don't know, you know? man. There's a like Shishi, one of our our regular commenters, talked about the defense early on, and I didn't get a chance to talk about it. There's nobody at the rim to stop them. Like they just don't have anybody. And it's like if a team commits to getting to the paint, they're going to score on the Mavericks. Yeah, J- JaVale is like a like a a deer just kind of just stumbling around out there. But 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 for moments, a motivated Kyrie is is just you know at another level. He made JaVale look you know playable. He you know you you talked about his ability to set up his teammates, the way he's able to kind of maneuver you know through the through the paint and finish over dudes that are eight eight inches taller than him, mm-hmm. and it. Doesn't and it looks like he's you know he does it with ease the way he's able to kind of you know almost like slow mo it and be able he sets to- the expectations set. for other small guys too high because people like the degree of difficulty is absurd. Absolutely, man. That's I mean, there's there's a you can definitely definitely see the descendant of like Rod Strickland and kind of all the stuff if you you know know anything about Kyrie and just how he kind of yep. really kind of grew into who he is. And I mean, I, I don't agree with kind of the degree that the the commenter had about Luca and kind of how the the chats react into it. But um, we gotta go, we gotta go easier on Luca. I think I think that's just his body type at this point. You know, like and, and he hasn't played a full basketball game in almost two weeks. I mean, I think some of it was just a stamina issue. Yeah. Um. I mean, like that dude's amazing. For twenty, no, we're, def- we're definitely very hard on him. But but like and, and I I think I, I think you know the the dynamic between Kyrie and Luca there's definitely a lot of respect there you can see it just from the comments I think I think what what uh what I'd hope to kind of see happen is instead of just like deferring for five to eight minute periods of time this is you know Luca time versus Kyrie yep. time that there'd be a little bit more meshing you know so that the defense you know can you know maybe be more off balance and not not be able to key in on one guy or the other or kind of know what that role is and, and to your point yeah like there were numerous opportunities at the end of the fourth overtime just to you know they're both they're both at the top of the key on on either ends of the you know the the top of the you know uh, you know at, at the three-point line there easily could have been an initiated kind of you know, and role play you know like I mean, and and for as easily as Luca and Kyrie are able to get to the paint, like a pick and roll, you know, with two players that you can, you know, expect to shoot 37, 40 percent on on a wide open three. I mean, it's it's a deadly combination. I don't think I don't think kid has the foresight to be like, you know, to do kind of what Kerr, Kerr does, where he's basically I'm not, I'm not going to show you you know, what we're really going to, we're really going to run in the playoffs until we get to the playoffs. I yeah. Don't, like the Mavs aren't good enough to do that. Like Car- Carlisle used to yeah. do that shit all the time. And it's like, dude, our teams are kind of stinky. Like, can we, can we please spam the, the uh, Luca, um, Chris Stapps pick and roll. And they just like, wouldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, lastly, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm really positive coming out of this game. You know, the playoffs are about half court basketball and I don't know many more teams that are, you, I mean, you, you, you mentioned the stat yourself, like they are just elite at half court basketball. And that's yeah. what, that's what the playoffs are going to be. And at this, you know, and, and I mean, Kyrie is clutch. I mean, he just is like that, that three pointer to get him within one or tying it at one seventeen, whatever it was. I mean, that that's basically the spot that he hit the, you know, the 2016. This is a throwback yeah. reference, but it reminded me of the kind of like three point shot you had taken. Like, was it two K street? It's like, it, cause he was floating to the right. That was not a shot where he was balanced. He's that's just a shot makers shot. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, there, there's quality on that Kings team. De'Aaron Fox. I mean, yeah. some of the bad teams out there two week, two years ago, they should have bought bought low on De'Aaron Fox. You know, like yeah. we were, you know. And I mean, guys like Terrence Davis on the bench, like you know, it's like a man. Yeah, that uh, I'm glad that dude. You go look at his season averages, and 
what he did to Dallas tonight was must have been how the Clippers felt whenever Theo Pinson came in and was like awesome for four minutes. Except except Terrence was just good the whole game. He was he was incredible for them. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I let in kind of uh, you're talking a little about Christian Wood. I mean, Christian Wood is like I think like you you hope on an average night that he's just doing what he what he did tonight. He's hitting fifty percent of his shots. You know, for every minute he's out there, he's you know, he's giving he's contributing a point. But like I just don't think he doesn't he doesn't have the ability to really be that defensive to have that defensive impact. I don't even think it's effort. I think it's just, it's not within him to do it. But the thing that you can do with him that may, that I, I would, I think would be a benefit to Dallas is, you know, more, more kind of pick and rolls at the top of the key with Kyrie, like no. Christian Wood can, can be a lob threat, you know, like, like you can't commit to Kyrie and, and defend Christian Wood. He still is athletic. You know, that's something that JaVale is not going to give you that, you know, he when he was good, that he would have been able to give you. But like there are ways to like get some of that out of him. And, you know, I, yeah, kid has his deficiencies. But overall, I would say that like kid like he, he actually managed the rotation pretty well this night. Yeah, you know, t- tonight. You know, I, I think, you know, you Chris think so? Did, I don't. I think he did poorly. There were lots of instances where, like, guys, some of their worst groupings of players were on the floor together. And I get if you have to space, you know, Mavericks are kind of talent deficient on the back end of the bench with some of the injuries. And then the fact they had to send out two starters to get Kyrie. So I I, I kid in rotations drive me nuts. I think towards the end of the game more so. Yeah, the first half definitely. Like, But I I think, like, the end of the game – like Christian Wood barely saw any playing time, if, yeah. if at all, after the seven-minute point in the fourth quarter. He just knew he couldn't win with them on defense when they need to get some stops. And Dwight Powell, I mean, for what he is, he's you know he's he's doing the best he can. You know, six eight, six nine center out there. Like he's you know, but I agree. Yeah, tonight was a night you missed Dorian Dorian Finney Smith out there being able to 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 guard deer and fox and maybe kind of get one or two more stops and, yep. and that could have been the difference but you know maybe there's something on the on the buyout market but thanks a lot for letting me kind of of course adam thanks for hanging out talk soon uh ronald in the chat just says we got played by terrence ross ah, the ross of it all this is why i don't get invested into buyout guys anymore it, that's really painful that Woj shared that you know he's the mavericks were the, the front runners only for him to go to the suns that's one i think is uh, if if the mavericks were able to get will barton i know will barton's real slight but for for him to soak up minutes i think would be huge for dallas um if we get danny green i will be big mad online because i'm tired of getting players two years after we were supposed to get them um and I, you know, and, and Pat Bev would just like make me fly into a rage. Uh, so of course those guys are going to become Mavericks. Ryan, welcome to the show. What's going on? <clears throat> Give Ryan a second to hit that unmute button. If he's, how about uh, that magic? Welcome. You know I mean? uh, how you doing, Kurt? Great. Thanks for joining. Yeah. Yeah. No, I enjoy the show. Actually, uh, I'm in Sacramento and uh, lived in Dallas my whole life, but uh, we're out in Sacramento for a little while. And uh, I was at the game tonight, actually last night in tonight. It awesome. is, uh, it's, it's about like the AAC. I mean, I can tell you the fans there are crazy. <laughs> it was, it was like a playoff game. I mean, it was like a playoff game tonight. I'm, I'm glass half full. Um, you know, first game back, Luca clearly wasn't hundred percent. I agree with everything you said about kids rotations. I, I was pulling my hair out with some of C woods lack of minutes. I personally don't feel like there's much of a drop off to Powell on the defensive side and the, the pick and roll, pick and pop with wood. They just needed one more player. And I'm tired of seeing Theo Pinson uh, love the guy, but I uh, love him as a cheerleader, not uh, you know, 20 minutes a night. So uh, well, it's, I would be, you know, I think I like, this is, a, this is me being a petty shit. But I think I could get away with Theo if he didn't have off, like, I'm too cool for this body language as he goes about not doing anything productive. Yeah, yeah. But I will say this. If Kleber was back at 100% and Luca was, was at 100%, we win this game. Ooh. So the uh, only thing I would have said, um, God, why not double Fox and take the ball out of his hands? I mean, he must – I don't have the, the box score, but he must have had – 20 of his 35 in the fourth quarter in OT. I mean, every time, yeah. you know, Reed Green was doing his best, but man, double him, get the ball. It's out. really tough to double somebody when they, cause like, you know, Luca brings up the ball on the left and right side of the floor a lot. 
Fox does a good job of going like right down the gut and it's difficult to, to double in the middle of the floor. That's why Dirk was always so effective. Cause then you're basically giving up like both sides it, and it's difficult, but I, I, some of the hey and you know what remember too we didn't have bertans tonight hey we did we, right. imagine if we had bertans we this you know this thing was over that dude so, plays uh, hard uh, he does he does he's all uh all effort so hey i appreciate the the time uh enjoy the show take care thanks for coming up all right guys nice little 40 minute show appreciate you hanging out with here on a uh, saturday night with me we'll be back monday night with the minnesota timberwolves where hopefully we have put rudy in prison Made him uncomfortable and sad. Then again, Anthony Edwards is always a really fun watch. Um, All right, guys, stop by Mavs Moneyball. Not sure if we're going to have that much. Um, I'm out of gas. Our team's out of gas. We just need to get to All-Star break. (laughs) Everybody be good and enjoy your weekend. And uh, I'm going to say go Chiefs and go Mavs. Bye, guys.